Did you hear about the final report of Alexis J's independent inquiry into child sexual abuse? No? Oh, you do surprise me. The inquiry took seven years to do, so that's, uh, let me just run the uh, arithmetic, 112 times the length of Liz Truss's premiership and indeed twice as long as Boris Johnson's. But the final report came out and sank without trace, almost as if the British state would rather these déclassé riffraff from the unfashionable part of town would just go back to being gang-raped without making a big deal about it. Maggie Oliver founded the Maggie Oliver Foundation, and she's one of the very few people in these islands who does make a big deal about it. Maggie, do you think these reports, these inquiries, we've had a decade's worth of them now, do you think they, they've actually had any effect, or do, are they a complete waste of time at this stage? I think when you're talking about the ICSA report, um, I think I've, I've made it very clear that when you're looking at the organised network strand, it was called the grooming gangs, I was one of the core participants. Mm. I don't believe it was worth the paper it was written on. Um, I went into it um, hoping, because it was Alexis J and she knew what had gone on in Rotherham, that this time it would be different. But right from the very start, Mark, and I worked on that for two years, as did, as did other people who work on the ground with, uh, with children who have been raped on, on this scale, I went into it hoping that they would look at the truth, but they didn't allow one single town from the north of England to be included. They allowed one victim to be interviewed. They filled 10 days with... 90% um, of the 10 days was spent uh, giving a platform to senior police officers and senior social workers who I would say are responsible for all these children having been failed over decades. Mm. People like me, mm. people like Parents Against Child Exploitation, Harriet Wistrich from the Centre for Women's Justice, we know what's going on. Victims were excluded. My statement was decimated from 58 pages to 18. We were not allowed to, to mm. speak. We were silenced. So, no, um, I think it was a waste of public money. It took seven years. And they came out with three recommendations, not obligations, recommendations, all of which you would assume were already being done. So if you're a teacher and you know a child is being sexually abused in your class, you do something about it. You shouldn't need a law to tell you that you need to do that. So, um, no. you know, it, it really, for me, was a waste of money, a waste of time, and I really fear for the future of children in these towns and cities because very little is really changing. Well, that uh, nice lady from the New Zealand High Court, who I think was the first uh, chairman in this particular inquiry, she basically left. We all know this. She won't actually say it within the United Kingdom because I think she got a hell of a shock at how corrupt, from a Kiwi point of view, the mother country was. But uh, she got out of there because she figured... Uh, that the main point of this report was just to sweet, take a long time so it could all be swept gradually under the carpet and nothing would be done to the people who enabled it to happen. I, I think you're right, Mark. Um, and I think it's because of people like me, like, like um, CWJ, you know, and victims who constantly keep the spotlight on this and people like you who will not let it go away because there is no yeah. doubt in my mind that the authorities would like it to fade away. Um, but it's not going to. The losers all the time are the children who are being let down and silenced. And whether it's Rotherham or Rochdale or Telford or Oxford, the, the mm. facts are the same. The authorities are not charging the right offences. The offenders are getting out of prison. Uh, after having a slap on the wrist, they are meant to be deported and they get 10 years of you know, legal aid fighting deportation. The victims are yep. the ones that are always the very last in line. Um, and I want to see changes. I want to see action. And when we get, you know, we had Rishi Sunak, we've had Suella Braverman, we've had uh, Liz Truss all mm. talking about these grooming gangs when they were up for re-election. Suddenly we've got a deathly silence. So when is yep. action going to follow words and promises? Because it's not going away and the, the cat is out of the bag now, Mark. 
So the, the country no. is up in arms about it. It is politicians that need to act and do something. And we're not going away until something is done. And it's not just the police. It is the CPS as well. It is the court system. It is the legal aid. Right. It is the whole gravy train which is not doing the job that they are paid to do. Well, just to go back to what you were talking about just there, um, because this is a case you know well, in Rochdale, uh, we're all supposed to be excited that Adil Khan and Carrie Abdul Ralph uh, were, after 10 years of appeals, uh, they're now going to be deported back to Pakistan. But 93 percent, that's a kind of estimate uh, I, that you can pretty much take to the bank. 93 percent of these cases and 93 percent of the perpetrators are still walking around Rochdale, Rotherham, Telford, Oxford, Aylesbury, uh, Banbury, on and on. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'll talk about Rochdale because I think the country understands Rochdale because of the drama. But that is going on in every mm. town and city. When you look at Rochdale, mm. when you look at Adil Khan, he was the man who got a 13-year-old child pregnant. We had a fetus. DNA proved he was the, the person responsible. The CPS chose not to charge that man with rape. He was out of prison in three years. Ten years on, he is still milking the system, fighting deportation. And can you believe it? He is arguing that he wants to be a role model for his own children, that he is entitled to a family life. Well, I am sorry, when somebody does what he did, he, um, he abdicates his rights. He, the, the rights of the child and of the victim should supersede his. And we've got the whole thing topsy-turvy. He should not still be here. He should have been deported the moment he walked out of the prison gates. And in fact, in my opinion, mm. he should be in prison now. If he was in America, he would have been serving a whole you know, catalogue of uh, life sentences for what he did. Mm. He's never said he was sorry. He should not have been given parole. He showed no remorse. And he continues to say that he's been treated unfairly. So the, the, the failures, it is always the victims. And his victim, who he got pregnant when she was just 13, never knew he was even out of prison until she walked round the, the end of the aisle in Asta and came face to face with him in unsupervised contact. He was with another child in his company. We went to safeguarding about it. They would do nothing. He was under no obligation to stay out of Rochdale. So he is exploiting a system that allows him to do that. So we need radical changes in the laws, in the way the system works, in how these abusers, these paedophiles, are allowed to continue to, um, you know, to carry on their lives as though they've done nothing wrong, Mark. And it still makes my blood boil mm. after all these years that well, it's that... still going on. No, that should make everybody's blood boil. This guy, he, Adil Khan, he's in his 50s now. So he was a middle-aged man when he raped and impregnated a 13-year-old girl who, as you say, uh, is, uh, is expected just to get on with her life, walk into the supermarket, see him in the next aisle with another victim. This is a disgrace. Uh, it's a national shame, and you're one of the few people doing anything about it, Maggie, with your foundation. We're going to stay on this story and keep on at it, because the silence of our political class and these worthless municipalities, as you say, it's not just the coppers, it's the prosecution service, it's the bureaucracy, it's the politicians, have, uh, are, are willing. I, I said uh, th the other day, I was talking about that famous line about the Irish troubles, when the Home Office cynically said, oh, we'll hold it down to an exception acceptable level of violence. This is even more cynical. We're holding it down to an acceptable level of child gang rape, and it's disgusting. Thank you very much, Maggie. It's always an honor to have you on.